Hey everybody, welcome to the free video and let's just kind of dive right in here. So we had been talking about the extended put call ratio. Uh, we pushed through that 200 period moving average, but remember the 10 day moving average of the put call ratio is telling us this, this market was incredibly short and to stay away from shorting it at these levels. And in fact, we were buying more spider calls uh, in our small lot group at 30 cents down at these levels. We got the huge move here. We're able to flip those out for $2.30 on this move. And now the question is, what do we do now? Well, the markets now have gone a little bit more neutral, so I'm not looking for any big extreme moves, but at this point I am looking for kind of that pullback to the mean. And at this point, that's about 284-ish on uh, the spiders. And so we're right now at 289. So that would be a 40 point move in the S&Ps. And I am looking for that to happen into the end of this week, probably Thursday or Friday. So what are some ways to do that? You could buy puts on the spiders. Um, you could sell call credit spreads on the spiders. Uh, but I also, you know, somebody was asking like, well, what about, you know, some, some of the stronger stocks? Um, you know, there are things like that, like on PayPal, would you want to short something like that? No, that stock is incredibly strong and has been resilient. That's not something I want to short. In fact, I would rather want to be a buyer of this on any pullbacks to support, okay? Um, on the other hand, though, on the indexes themselves, especially on something like the SPX, certainly looking for that kind of grinding down into the end of this week, all right? So that's kind of the main thing I'm looking at there. And then, of course, we do have options expiration coming up next week. Uh, there's a lot of fun ways to take advantage of that. Uh, one trade I'm looking at here is Facebook. So you can see Facebook here has had a nice rally up to that 8 EMA on the weekly chart. All right, that's kind of a rejection period. And we're right here at the Bollinger Band here. As we go into next week, though, I'm curious is, is there some open interest here where we could take advantage of what I would call a pretty normal pullback to 175? So let's dive into that a little bit more deeply. Okay, so one thing here that I want to point out is that there are some very, very interesting ways to take advantage of this if you're a little bit more advanced trader or if you really want to dive into the mechanics of some of these things. So one of my favorite ways to do this is with what I call ratio spreads, okay? And we'll talk about a ratio spread and then what I would just call a poor man's ratio spread. So let's take a look. So basically, let's say that hey, we're looking for this thing to pin to $175, okay? So we could buy these in the money options. So let's just do it from a one lot comparison here. And say, okay, I'm gonna buy these 180 puts. They're $4.45. And of course, if it drifts down to 175, these, I mean, if we held it all the way to expiration, those would go to about $5, right? It's like, okay, well, that's not that attractive. Um, however, a ratio spread is just the idea that, well, if this thing pins at 175, what would be nice is to do something where um, we sell some of these so that they expire worthless, but then we're also long this one to have a little bit of protection there. Okay, and so what's the best way to do that? Well, there's, a, there's something here called a ratio spread. So you just go sell, back ratio, and you could do two to one or three to one. If I'm doing something where I'm day trading and I'm feeling a little bit more aggressive, then awesome. I will do a three to one ratio spread. And what's great about this is that you end up getting a fairly decent credit. Okay. So in this case, it's a $2.21 credit. Um, and if we look at this from a PL perspective, now, of course, in this case, it's obviously naked. So we'll talk about what that means. So if this thing starts to fall, you know, below that 175 level, then it could get pretty hairy pretty quickly, right? But with this kind of one lot trade, if it goes to um, $175, so basically if we just if we just bought the 180 put at $4.45, and obviously if it went to 175 and we held it to expiration, that would be $5, right? Well. We got a 445 debit and we're basically trying to make 55 cents, give or take. This way what happens is we're still buying this 445 put, but we're also selling three of the 175 puts um, at, and those are trading at about $2.20. So we end up, you know, if you're selling a bunch of those, that's 
$6.60 less the debit paid gives you a credit. And so what's nice about that is this one lot trade, instead of turning into something where you end up making 50 bucks, turns into something where you can make about $700 if that pans out. Now, what's also nice about this is that you can, if you're looking at this going like, well, John, I've got a small account. I can't screw around with something like this. Um, you can um, also continue to tweak it from there. And we can take a quick look at that. So there's a couple of different ways to skin this cat, but basically if you uh, want to make it covered, i.e. not naked, then you can construct it this way. You can get a credit for it. Okay, so you start off with a credit, and then what's great about this is that if the stock, if the trade doesn't work out and it rallies against you, okay, similar to the other ratio spread, then you actually still lock in a profit. Okay, so if the stock just takes off, you're just like, oh my gosh, great. If it goes to where you want it to go, that's where you make your max profit. You'll notice that your max profit is similar, but not quite the same as the max profit on the other trade. And then the main, and then the difference here, of course, is that if Facebook falls, your risk to the downside is capped. When, especially when you're doing that Thursday, Friday options expiration, this is this and the ratio spread, and there's another one. These are the best, most consistent income trades you can do because you're not dependent fully on the direction of the stock. All right, so if you're interested or curious in what I just showed you, here's a funny story. Uh, when I first got into options, I used to make fun of what I would simply call complicated strategies. And I did them, and I would kind of do it as kind of a throwaway trade, and like, oh, yeah, but I would kind of make fun, and I make fun of it in my book, too. And I remember when Henry started working with me, and you know we were mostly doing directional trades because that's what I would do. And I would kind of every once in a while say something like, "Oh yeah, these you know ratio spreads and all these complicated things are you know they're just you know who wants to do them?" But I'd still do them once in a while. And and Henry would just sit there, and, and he got frustrated with some of the volatility with long calls and long puts because you know you know if you're long a call and the stock pukes, that can hurt, right? And um, he got curious and intrigued by the idea of like, well. He's like, you know, when you're doing these more complicated strategies once in a while, John, you seem to do them in a certain amount of time in a certain situation. I'm going to take that ball and run with it. And so over the years, he's been sitting here and he's kind of and he's fine tuned this technique. He does it all the time now to the point where I'm like, uh, all right, Henry, what are the ideal situations that you've identified since this has kind of been a niche that you've been focused on? Uh, for doing this, because I want to know about it. And he started telling me about it. I'm like, you need to show people this. This is this is great stuff. So he's going to go through this Saturday, June 15th, from 12 to 4, and really talk about, I mean, really, this is just about exploiting options for their full potential for creating weekly income. So is this for beginners? Look, I'm going to be honest and tell you it's not really for beginners. This is something where you've got, you know, if you've already got some options knowledge, and you really want to get into things like back ratio spreads and broken wing butterflies. And there's a couple of other ones that he does. But basically, it's set up to exploit options. Uh, a lot of it's Thursday and Friday weekly expiration and monthly expiration, but also just trades in general that do well during uncertainty and during volatility. The strategy class here is just $397. And this, in and of itself, will pay for itself hundreds of times over. If you're interested in doing the live trading, I always advise people to do the live trading. You can get two days of live trading for just an extra 200 bucks. Now, one of the tools they likes to use is the Voodoo Lines. If you're familiar with those and you already have them, great. If you don't and you don't know what they are, he'll talk about those during the Saturday class, so I wouldn't worry about that. It's not something that you need for this. It's just something that's helpful. All right. So this is, uh, you know, again, if you're looking to take your options trading to the next level, Henry is not only has he developed a strategy with this more complicated stuff that works consistently, but he is also the best teacher for this stuff. I can get impatient and start, you know, I'll start running off and like, all right, you know, blah, 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 blah. Henry will methodically walk you through this and take your game to the next level. So, all right, simplertrading.com forward slash pocket. I'm going to be on the class as an attendee uh, because I, Henry is again, the most methodical teacher that I've found with this stuff, and I want to dive in and see what he's come up with over the 
four or five years of really diving into this and see how I can add that to my own arsenal as well. All right, it's going to be a fun class. See you guys there.